So during uh, this uh, lecture session under uh, statistical process control, uh, so I'll be uh, again referring to uh, the control charts for the variables. Uh, certain problems on uh, uh, on control charts, uh, particularly I'll take up one numerical problem uh, related to R and X bar charts. I uh, will discuss it uh, thoroughly. And then uh, obviously, you know, uh, an important issue we must discuss that is the control chart patterns. Okay, so uh, this uh, uh, three issues we will be discussing this one. Now, continuing our uh, discussion on control chart for uh, the variables. I have already mentioned that uh, uh, whenever the sample size is 1 and uh, so what you try to do that means uh, you have no other way but to uh, construct uh, a control chart for the individual units. Now uh, you must be wondering that uh, uh, that why the sample size is 1. Now uh, there are uh, many reasons, so some of the reasons you must be aware of that is uh, you know in many cases when you, uh, you go for inspecting the item essentially what you are doing you know getting a sample and then uh, individual units uh, you are inspecting. Now uh, uh, sometimes uh, you have to adopt destructive testing that means uh, in order to uh, get the data you have to uh, you have to uh, the destroy uh, the unit. So the destructive testing is very very common in many uh, cases for uh, measuring uh, the values of the quality characteristics like say tensile strength okay many cases. So here what you try to do that means uh, uh, you, uh, you, you say that uh, the sample size should be as minimum as possible and ideal size is 1. The second uh, the reason could be like say the production rate. The production rate is uh, very low that means in one shift you just get uh, one unit is it ok. So, it all depends on what is your uh, the manufacturing process time. So, that may be the reason that why the sample size may be 1 is it right. And uh, uh, so, when uh, a sample size is 1 now as uh, usual there could be two cases and you are uh, you are advised to uh, you know uh, construct the control chart you are advised to use that control chart. So, in the case 1 like in the uh, previous case uh, the no standards are given. So, if the no standards are given then uh, what is the estimate of the process standard deviation? The process standard deviation is given by m r bar divided by d 2. D 2 I have already explained what is m r that means what you try to do that means suppose uh, the 20 such uh, the data points you have collected. So, now in each sample uh, you have just one data point. So, obviously in each sample you cannot calculate uh, uh, say the dispersion. So, uh, as soon as you get the second sample that means uh, the next data point you get now you compare between these two. So, that is referred to as the moving range is it ok. So, if you have 20 data points or the 20 samples Okay. Uh, now, obviously, the uh, the moving range uh, you will have 19 moving range, and what we are assuming that uh, obviously, you know, uh, uh, the second uh, data point is maybe uh, the uh, the first uh, moving range, the second moving range, third moving range, up to say n minus one at uh, moving range. They are essentially dependent because there are some common. Uh, so, the data points everywhere, but we are assuming at the initial stage that this uh, you know uh, this correlation between the successive moving ranges is this correlation is not that significant is it ok. And uh, as you know that this uh, uh, MR bar by D 2 uh, this expression uh, uh, may be valid under some distributional assumption. So, uh, so once uh, this is valid then center line and control limits for the MR chart you can uh, immediately you can determine like the center line for MR or the moving range control chart is MR bar that always you can calculate 
and uh, then upper control limit for MR is uh, D4 MR bar. If it's like in the in the previous case when uh, you construct uh, uh, the R control chart, and similarly the lower control limit for MR D3 that is uh, D3 into MR bar is it okay? Now, <coughs> uh, when n equals to 2, that means D4 is 3.267. That means MR to compute uh, MR, what is the sample size? That means you must have the two data points. So, for n equals to 2, uh, what is the value of D4? D4 is 3.267. If it, uh, there is, I know, if you refer to uh, the control chart uh, factors tables. So, you get these values 3.267 and D3 will be 0. So, the control limits becomes upper control limit is 3.267 into MR bar and the lower control limit is 0. Central line is x central line for x chart obviously, this is central line for x is x bar it is not MR is it ok. So, this is x and that is x bar control limits for x chart are obviously upper control limit and lower control limits we determine and we assume that uh, the control limits are at plus minus 3 sigma limits. So, x bar okay, plus 3 times m r bar by d 2 that is upper control limit for x chart and similarly for the lower control limit x chart is x bar minus 3 times m r bar by d 2. Okay. So, later on we will take up uh, examples on this and uh, uh, obviously, you know these uh, the formulations we will be using. In the case 2 when the standards are given that means, you do not need to collect data. So, you assume that uh, the standard is given as you know x uh, x o bar. So, upper control limit and the lower control limit for the x chart you determine as 3 into sigma 0. So, what are the standards given? Standards uh, for the mean in x 0 bar and the standards uh, for uh, you know uh, the, the dispersion is sigma 0. So, this is uh, straight uh, you know the formulation and when n equals to 2 d 2 is 1.128 and uh, the corresponding expressions for uh, the center line upper control limit and the lower control limit will be this one is it ok. So, d 2 sigma 0 is it ok. So, this is uh, this way you determine uh, uh, you know the control limits for uh, uh, both uh, uh, m r uh, control chart as well as the x control charts. Okay. So, later on I will be taking up uh, the numerical exercises or numerical problems. Okay. Now, uh, when n is a variable there could be several approaches for constructing control charts and these approaches are control limits based on individual sample sizes. Okay. Control limits based on average sample size, control limits based on representative sample sizes, standardized control charts. That means, here uh, main issue is that uh, control charts uh, when you try to draw that means, if the sample size may be a variable is it ok. So, when n is a variable that means, over the samples uh, n is not constant there could be many situations like you know you say that my production rate varies over the time periods and uh, what I try to do that means, from each uh, say uh, say the production volume that is uh, population, I just draw the 10 percent of uh, uh, of the population uh, the units as the sample units 10 percent. So, obviously, if the population uh, size changes as the production rate changes, so the sample size also might change. So, this is a very common occurrence. Now, uh, what you try to do that means, uh, when n is a variable you have to uh, uh, say uh, you, you can uh, modify your formulations or you must know how to deal with uh, this particular situation. So, there are four approaches. In the first approach what you do? You determine control limits based on the individual sample size that you can do. Uh, so, this is very simple, but uh, there are certain disadvantages you have. The second one is you determine uh, the average sample size and then uh, based on the average sample size you determine the upper control limit and the lower control limit as well as the center line. Now, the third uh, uh, you know the alternative could be that there could be uh, out of uh, many sample sizes you come across. 
some uh, may be considered as a representative sample sizes. That means, their uh, you know uh, the frequency of occurrence is high. So, you select uh, two or three such uh, representative sample sizes and for each one you determine the control limit. So, this is the third alternative and the fourth alternative is the standardized control chart. So, all these uh, you know uh, the four approaches we will we'll discuss it in the later on. So, at this point in time you just uh, note uh, the possible approaches uh, that uh, you have to adopt or you have to use when n is a variable. Okay. Now, here is uh, 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 a problem on, uh, on say R control chart as well as X bar control chart. So, let me uh, explain it like consider a process by which coils are manufactured. Is it okay? So, this is you must know that uh, while you select a process for control charting, what does it uh, produce? Samples of size 5 are randomly selected from the process and as soon as you find that the sample size is less, immediately you may assume that, uh, that you are dealing with a quality characteristic which is uh, uh, of variable type. Is it okay? So, uh, so from each sample of size 5, you uh, uh, get the data that means, uh, this is the resistance values uh, in ohms uh, of the coils. Is it okay? So, this data you collect. Then what do you do? That means, uh, you calculate the R bar. That means, there is the G number of samples, okay, G number of samples and here, uh, you know, for each sample you calculate, uh, uh, say, the range and uh, if you add them for 25 samples you get a value of 87 so obviously r bar is 3.48 so how do you determine uh, the upper control limit and the lower control limit so you apply the formula and uh, when you apply this formula that is d4 r bar and d3 r bar we are assuming that the control limits are at plus minus 3 sigma limit if uh, you have uh, some other uh, you know control limits like in certain cases we go for say plus minus 2.5 uh, sigma limits. Obviously, you cannot use this formula, you have to use uh, uh, this formula, is it okay? So, 3 d 3 and uh, the d 2 these values you have to, uh, you, you have to consider uh, while you compute uh, uh, say the control limits and instead of uh, having uh, uh, 3, you have 2.5. So, this is uh, a case, but usually unless otherwise stated the control limits are are set at plus minus 3 sigma limit. So, this way you calculate the upper control limit and the lower control limit is it ok. So, d 3 is 0. So, the lower control limit is 0 ok. So, these are the data points ok. So, you have 25 uh, the samples and this is the individual observations again each sample you just uh, uh, look at these values there are 5 values in each sample. So, sample size is 5 and then uh, uh, you calculate x bar uh, for each sample. So, but the sum is this one and uh, you, you calculate the range in each sample and total sum is 87. Is it ok? So, uh, you, you note uh, you have certain comments to make like for a particular sample, say sample 3. So, suddenly the range is more. Is it ok? So, you say it is a inexperienced vendor and for this sample it is 4, so high temperature and when it is 3, you say the reason could be the wrong dye. Is it ok? So, uh, there must be a common uh, column. So, how do you calculate the center line? That means, the center line you calculate as x i bar uh, sigma divided by g that means, total is 521 by 25 20.840 and n equals to 5 gives a 2 is equals to points. Uh, 0.577. Is it okay? So you refer to uh, say uh, the control chart uh, factor factors table, and directly you can read this value. So what is the trial control limit? So trial control limit you calculate. Is it okay? So that is UCL X bar, LCL X bar. That is 22.848 and 18.832. Okay. Now what do you do now? Okay. So first you consider. Uh, say, uh, say the range chart is it okay? This is your range chart you have. 
So, you find that particularly this sample has gone out of control. Is it okay? All other points are not uh, uh, not plot, not plotted outside of the uh, the control zone. So, uh, so what you need to do? You have to remove this point, and when you are removing the point, that this sample point from the from uh, uh, the data set, uh, it means that you have identified uh, uh, the reasons. Is it okay? Assignable causes, and you have uh, taken steps to remove those assignable causes. So, and similarly. Uh, this point uh, is to be removed and uh, here in this case when you go for uh, plotting uh, the individual x bar values is it okay uh, in the uh, in the x bar uh, you know the control chart you will find possibly these points and these points uh, as well as these points they are plotted outside of the control limits is it okay. So, uh, you have to uh, remove uh, those values is it okay or uh, those uh, the sample values you have to remove from the data set and you have to recalculate uh, the mean as well as the control limits for both uh, R chart as well as the X bar chart is it ok. So, and whenever you are removing certain sample points it means that uh, you, you could identify the assignable causes uh, or the special causes and you have taken uh, you know the appropriate steps to remove those causes. So, okay, so, this is the implied meaning. When the special causes for these three samples were investigated, operators found this is a case in fact found that the large value for the range in sample 3 was due to the quality of raw materials and components purchased from a new vendor. Is it okay? It is a point we have already mentioned. When the special causes for samples 22 and 23 were examined, operators found that oven temperature was too high for sample 22 and the wrong dye was used for sample 23. Is it ok? That means constantly what you are trying to do that means uh, you are uh, monitoring the process is it ok and you are, your objective is to control uh, the process and you are aware of what could be the possible reasons of uh, uh, getting uh, an abnormally high value or abnormally low value is it ok. So, the remedial actions were taken to rectify this situation this is obvious with samples 3, 22 and 23 deleted the revised center line on the R chart is R bar is equal to 72 by 22 that means 3 samples are gone that is 3.273 and then the revised control limits are calculated like say upper control limit the lower control limit. Okay, the same formula you use and these are the two values you have and uh, as far as x bar chart is concerned you calculate x uh, double bar and these uh, the three points already removed. So, obviously, uh, you know uh, so you do not consider uh, those three uh, the three samples uh, for computing you know uh, uh, the, uh, the mean as well as the upper control limit and lower control limit for x bar chart. So, that is why you will find this is 22 over here. So, this x double bar is 20.864 and similarly UCL is 22.753 you know the formula and LCL is this. Note that the sample 15 <coughs> falls slightly above the upper control limit on the x bar chart. So, this is your observation on further investigation no special causes could be identified for this sample. So, the revised limits will be used for future observations until a subsequent revision takes place. Okay. So, these are the notings or these are the comments uh, you need to make. So, now, <coughs> suppose, so suppose the specifications are 21 plus minus 3 ohms is it ok you are dealing with uh, a register right and uh, this is the specifications. Determine the proportion of the output that is non conforming assuming that the coil resistance is normally distributed is it ok. So, this is a typical problem. Now, what do you find that the from the revised R chart already we have constructed the R chart the center line is found to be the center line notation is R bar that is 3.50 is it ok. So, the estimated process standard deviation is R bar by D 2 that is sigma hat that means, this is an estimate that is 1.505. So, the reverse central line on the x bar chart 
is x double bar is 20.864 an estimate of the process mean is it okay so the standardized normal value at the lower specification limit lsl so lsl is 18 21 minus 3 that is the lsl so 18 minus that means the mu mu is basically 20.864 so the difference from the mu from the mu and expressed in the standard deviation unit so what is the standard deviation that is 1.505 so that's why it is 1.505 so z well z1 is minus 1.90 is it clear i think it is very very clear so uh, so what do you try to do that means here it is uh, we calculate similarly we calculate z2 that means what is the upper specification limit that is 24 so 24 minus 20.864 divided by sigma that is 1.505 that is 2.08 it's clear so from the normal distribution table the proportion of the product below the lsl is 0 0.0287 that is this one 0 0.0287 that means this is the lsl that is 18 this area we are trying to uh, you know determine and similarly this area this means up uh, means the beyond the upper specification limit that is 24 so this uh, area is 0 0.0188 so if you add uh, them so you get a value of 0 0.0475 it means that 4.75 percent of the units you produce uh, they are non-conforming is it okay so if the daily production rate is 10,000 coils and if the coils with a resistance less than the LSL cannot be used for the desired purpose. What is the loss to the manufacturer if the unit cost of scrap is 50 cents? Is it okay? So the daily cost of the scrap 10,000.0287. Is it okay? So that is the proportion. Is it okay? The below LSL, and for each one you have 0.5 uh, the dollars. That means 143.50 dollars. Is it okay? So uh, or say rupees, whatever it is. So, in terms of uh, say, uh, say a particular say the currency, you can calculate that what is the total daily cost of scrap. Because here, whatever the proportion you get uh, and uh, the units which are less than LSL, so you cannot uh, rectify them. Is it okay? Reworking is not possible. So, they are uh, uh, declared as a scrap. Is it okay? Whereas, if it is, uh, you know, uh, uh, so the more than uh, say 24 resistance maybe you know uh, you can take some uh, reworking uh, say or say you can rectify is it okay so uh, this is this is the typical examples later on we'll take up uh, many such uh, numerical problems okay so so that uh, if you uh, uh, the go through the numerical problems uh, so your understanding will be better is it okay so these are the two typical problems we have taken up so many such uh, problems uh, we can take it up, but uh, uh, but we'll have uh, those exercises in separate sessions. Okay, now you know the next important topic uh, I am going to discuss uh, before I conclude this session, that is uh, the control chart patterns and the corrective actions. Is it okay? So as uh, we have been saying all the time, means whenever we discuss uh, uh, these particular topics, a uh, control charting we always make a statement and what is that statement we say that the construction of the control chart is very easy whereas the interpretation of the control chart is it okay if i look at the con so is a control chart so you will find that uh, there are several uh, several uh, you know uh, uh, the points uh, the plotted uh, on a particular control chart looking at these plots you have to uh, interpret and when you look at these plots these plots uh, maybe or uh, or say you know you can identify certain patterns within these plots so when you get these patterns so the patterns are reflecting certain kinds of conditions whether it's an in control state or the out of control state so looking into the patterns and based on your knowledge the process knowledge you have to conclude whether the process is in control or process has gone out of control is it clear so so the pattern uh, interpretation is not that easy it's clear 
So, in that context we say the interpretation of the control chart is not that easy. So, you need uh, sufficient uh, uh, the sufficient process knowledge uh, okay and uh, then only you will an experience and then only you will be able to interpret those patterns. So, uh, uh, so when you deal with uh, several kinds of situations, several kinds of processes, so you may uh, the find several kinds of patterns. So, in these particular discussions, okay, so I will try to the classify these patterns. Is it okay? These and each pattern, each type is referred to as a kind of pure pattern. And what you will find in fact in the specific uh, scenario, suppose uh, in a you have collected data, you have been using your control chart for say one month or one quarter. You know, uh, so many kinds of uh, you know uh, the plot patterns you may come across. So it's a combination. But first you must know what are the different types of patterns you may come across. So the first one is the natural pattern. So what is a natural pattern? Natural pattern is one which in which no identifiable arrangement of the plotted points exist. Is it clear? That means uh, this is an may be assumed to be a natural pattern. That means uh, the, the all the points are plotted within the control limits. That means uh, the necessary condition for an in control state is uh, is achieved. But what is the sufficient condition? That means when you look at this pattern, is it a natural pattern? That means uh, this, this this can you say that this is a, is a random pattern? Is it okay if you say it's a natural pattern? So you say that the process is in control. Is clear? That means uh, you don't find any any particular you know the systematic pattern. Is it okay? Right. So first one is the natural patterns, and if you find the natural pattern, you say that uh, process is in control. Sudden shift in the levels. Okay. Sudden change at the jump in pattern level on an X bar or R chart, like say these are the points you have. Suddenly you will find that uh, it moves to this higher value and then almost it is continuing, is it okay? The process is continuing around the higher values. That means this is say one level and it moves to whatever may be the cause, it has moved to the, 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 the next level from level 1 to level 2. Now, this is uh, essentially the sudden one. That means, uh, in electrical uh, uh, control, uh, say the terminology, this is referred to as a step function. Is it okay? In a control theory, is almost a step function. Is it okay? So, this is obviously there must be some reasons. There shall be assignable causes. So, you have to find it out. And just uh, as an assignment, while well, I can suggest that supposing you are uh, you find this sort of pattern in an R chart, what is the possible reason? Same sort of say you know the pattern you observe in X bar chart, what could be the possible reasons? Is it okay? So this is next one. Now next one is the gradual shifts in the levels. Gradual shifts in the levels. Is it okay? That means you have a, a level like this. What do you find from this point onwards? This is a shift, and then it took uh, uh, you know uh, few samples before you get stabilized to the next level. That means initially it was at this level around these points. Process is it okay around this? Suddenly something has uh, something has happened at this point, and then it's continuing, and then the process gets stabilized at the 12th sample and then uh, it reaches a different level, the next level and around that level the process continues. Is it okay? So, this is called gradual shifts in the levels. That means, gradual shifts in level occur when a process parameter changes gradually over a period of time. Is it okay? So, this might happen like say the raw materials suddenly you know you say that okay, I will be using a different kind of raw materials. So, already the old raw materials are in the working process. So, it takes time for you to, uh, to remove you know uh, the old raw materials uh, with uh, uh, substituting with the new raw materials. So, it takes time. So, over uh, a few samples you get the next state. Is it okay? So, this is 
gradual shifts or gradual changes in the levels. What is the trending pattern? The trending pattern in the previous two cases, what you find that the from one uh, one level you are moving to uh, say uh, the next level, uh, but in each level uh, there is a condition of stability. Whereas in the trending pattern, what you find that the process has not yet become stable. That means it is continuing. That means uh, you know either there could be upward trend or there could be downward trend. So here in this case, what you find there is an upward trend, and the process has not yet become uh, you know the stable. So it is continuing. So the trends differ from the gradual shifts in level in that the trends do not stabilize or settle down. Is it okay? That means initially it might happen that is you have installed a process and the process has not yet become stable and suppose you start uh, using uh, a control chart so the control chart patterns uh, may be of this type is it clear so trending pattern then cyclic patterns so this is a cyclic pattern that means which repeats then the cyclic patterns are characterized by repetitive periodic behavior in the system that means these are the values you get in one condition and when you change the condition you get uh, different higher values than this one and again you uh, you uh, bring, you bring in uh, the uh, you know the original condition and again you get uh, the same values okay the previous values and again uh, the condition changes over the time period so this is a typical cyclic patterns that means there are assignable causes so these are the cycles you get over the other uh, over the samples next one is the wild patterns is it okay wild patterns are divided into two categories the freaks and the bunches you know the you know the freaks are basically you know uh, this is uh, is uh, is a uh, freak means is this one suddenly you'll find that one particular value sample value is very very high they refer to as the king kong very large value or very low value somewhere here so you have to uh, search for the causes what has gone wrong what is the specific reason so that means this could be a lilliput is it okay so either it could be a king kong or it could be a lilliput or what do you say that these freak patterns or the freaks may continue so say 1 2 3 4 these are all higher values are very very high values compared to the other values or very low values so this is referred to as the bunches or the groups is it okay so these are referred to as the wild patterns then you have the mixture pattern that means uh, the effect of two or more populations is it okay that means uh, i have already mentioned that while you create the sample that means you have to follow the principles of rational subgrouping now suppose uh, you find you you say that uh, all the low values i will get and uh, in a particular at a particular during a particular time period and i will form a sample and in the next time period you get all the high, high values and you form another sample and again next to next you get uh, the small values and uh, next to next one you get high values is it okay so what it so that means this is very high value this is low value next one is also low value next what you do that means this is you say that this is almost it may be touching the upper control limit so you say you go for under control then it almost uh, reaching the lower control limit then you say you go for over control and again so it is a phenomenon called under controlling as well as the over controlling is it okay there is all you are always on toes when you are trying to control this is it okay so from one one extreme you go to uh, the other extreme and this uh, process continues is it okay so so either this effect of two or more populations okay then you have the stratification patterns that means when you mix up in a sample low values with the high values so what is you expect that means the average value will be almost uh, you know uh, uh, will be around the center line so sometimes you get confused you might conclude that the process is highly in control but actually it may not be so you getting my point that means you are not following the principles of rational subgrouping okay appropriately so this is called stratification pattern and the last one that i'm going to discuss that is the interaction pattern an interaction pattern occurs when the level of one variable 
affects the behavior of other variables associated with the quality characteristics of interest. So, these are the temperatures. So, if the temperatures uh, you change, this is the level A. So, this is uh, you know the values you will find. If uh, the temperature level you know gets reduced, you will find different kinds of values over there. That means, the output is it clear. So, the effect of temperature on the output and uh, it is very, very you know uh, significant is it okay in presence of say the pressure. So, this is this point also we will discuss when we will take up uh, you know the problems associated problems. So, these are the uh, you know the control chart patterns and whenever you find uh, one particular pattern you conclude that the process has gone out of control and the possible reasons of uh, of out of control or the assignable causes you must be able to identify and the corrective actions are to be taken. Okay.